Hey everybody, welcome back to Kiki Loves Nigeria. I know it has been a while and I sincerely apologize, but life calls, you know? You got those duties in real life that you gotta do, and that's what I've been doing. <laughs> so hey, let's get back to our story. Let's get back to Miss Danita. This is now 2022, January. Miss Danita is happy. She is feeling good. She is celebrating her love. She is celebrating her new life. She is celebrating her health. She has got her health back. She's got love in her life. And she's on her way to Nigeria. She's encouraging everybody to stay healthy. She's encouraging everybody to stay positive. She's encouraging everybody to stay strong. So let's follow her on her journey to Nigeria. So now we're at the end of January in 2022. And what's remarkable about this video is that this is like seven months before Miss Danita passes. And she's telling people in this video when she goes to Nigeria, we probably will never see her again. And we didn't. Let's watch. But when will I see you again? Oh, never. Never. Never? Well, maybe someday. When? Tomorrow? Oh, no. Hey, everybody. Now it is February. And of course, it's Valentine's Day. And Miss Danita is celebrating the love of her life, her husband. And she posted a video celebrating their love. So... As I look at this video, y'all, I just can't believe this is four months before this lady takes her last breath. This is four months before Miss Danita passes away. So in this video, we get some idea about Miss Danita's mental state in reference to her family. Because the entire time I've been researching this, I kept asking the question over and over and over again. Where was her family? Where was her family? Why weren't they saying anything? Why weren't they doing anything? And after I found this video, I understood why they weren't saying anything and why they weren't doing anything because she was estranged from her family. She had a dysfunctional relationship, as she called it, with her family. And this, to me, in my opinion, leaves her even more vulnerable and more open for things like this to happen. When you don't have a family or you don't have anybody stable like a family, people who are vultures can really prey off of you because they know you don't have any support system. You don't have anybody to turn to who you can bounce your ideals off of. You don't have anybody to turn to that's going to tell you that that is crazy and you need to leave that person alone. You don't have that when you don't have your family. You may have friends, but friends are be, gonna be a little more cautious when it comes to telling you the truth. A family that loves you and respects you, they're gonna tell you the truth right off rip. They're not gonna hesitate, they're not gonna play, they're gonna tell you the truth and they're gonna keep you grounded. And from what I can see from this video, poor Miss Danita did not have a family that kept her grounded. And this left her even more open to this vulture and this situation, this terrible situation that got a hold of her. And remember, this video was taken four months before Miss Danita took her last breath in Nigeria, where she is still buried because her family has not asked for her body to be returned blood is thicker than water, family over everything. You know, your loyalty, you have a blind loyalty to your family, specifically in black communities. And, and it's understandable considering, you know, back in um, when we were enslaved people that we were separated by our, from our families and 
um, or family members are sold. So I get it. However, in 2022, uh, I think that we have evolved enough to say that although family are the people that you shared a bloodline with or genetics with, that as you get older, I think that the role that they should play in your life gets a little clearer over time. And a lot of the times what that means is that their significance diminishes greatly in your life. You know, I'm in this place with my family now where I go back and forth between wanting to just cut them all off and say, I don't ever want to talk to y'all again, to maybe I should attempt to reconcile these relationships one more time. But I'm realizing that sometimes in our efforts to reconcile is what we're all of you holding on to is uh, just these childhood um, fables that we were told about what family should be. And then ultimately, when we're looking out for what's in our best interest, that sometimes it means letting some of these relationships go. You know, um, I have a very dysfunctional relationship with my family. I've always been the one that's kind of been the black sheep. I've always been the one who has shouldered a lot of the burdens, but also been the one that's first to be thrown under the bus. And um, I'm kind of getting sick of it at this point to where uh, I'm not quite sure how I want to even respond to them anymore. You know, part of me wants to just put all their business out to show people who they really are. Part of me just says, just leave them alone and keep it moving. Um, but, you know, family uh, is what you make of it. Family is your tribe, those people that encourage you and affirm you, who want to see the best version of you and actively pursue helping you become that person, who are able to just make those sacrifices for you. Um, and I found in my life, my family just doesn't do that for me. And so I continue to embrace my tribe. And I encourage you all as well, if you feel distance from your family go find your real family because even though the genetic one help you grow up they may not be the ones that you need to take with you into the future all right y'all in this clip we find miss danita feeling sad and feeling down and feeling just frustrated with the whole situation now she's frustrated because she's been delayed okay she feels like she's being delayed, but she refuses to be denied. All right. Now, that's a problem in itself because sometimes delays is God telling you, hold up. Wait a minute. Think about what you're doing. Think about the moves you're about to make. Maybe that's what the delays were. But instead, Miss Danita took the fighting mode. So she became upset and she became angry with anyone who objected to her decision to move. She became angry and upset with anyone who would not support her financially or even morally. Because she wasn't even getting the support she wanted morally from people. Because people just did not feel like this was the right thing for her to do. They just didn't feel like this was the right thing for her just to uproot her entire life and her kids and her family to go to Nigeria to be with someone that she had only known for three months. And remember people, when she came back from Nigeria the first time, she was really, really sick. Remember that? She was really sick. Remember she was making videos to show him that she could move around again? So when she came back, it sounds like she didn't have much movement. So this is why people weren't supporting her the way that she wanted them to. And the answer is absolutely not. I'm fucking horrible, okay? Like, Inherently, I had, an, I, I had a feeling I might have to push it back, right? But even though I had the feeling, it doesn't change the fact that after I had to, to push it back, that the torture that is created is horrible, incomprehensible. I'm feeling, it's grueling to know that I am separated by my husband for another who knows how long I haven't seen him in 16 months can you imagine even military wives I don't even think can can, can just say this you have not seen your husband in 16 months and on top of not seeing your husband in 16 months that in the middle of that he was violently assaulted and almost died and you couldn't be there for him 
So I'm out here doing what I gotta do. I'm a single mom out here. I don't have help, you know. I don't have food stamps, you know. I'm grinding my fucking ass off out here to just be a single mom, keep my kids happy, keep my kids engaged. And I'm out here suffering, struggling, hurting, angry. Like this shit ain't no joke, you know. I try to help and do as much good as I can. That's what I'm here for. I'm created to serve. And I don't complain about that. It's not about the serving. But at some point, though, as a human, we say, where do I win? When do I get mine? When do I get my season of joy? And everyone will say, oh, it's, it's right around the corner. But guess what, boo-boo? It's hard to see right around the corner when you've got a lot of fucking stresses in between you and around the corner. So not only have I been struggling to maintain a household by myself to raise two special needs kids, right? Not only have I been doing that all this whole time, but now on top of that, I say, you know what? I got to do what I got to do. I got to grind to get to my husband because that's the only thing that's going to make me happy at this point. Nothing in America can make me happy. No career, no nothing can make me happy. So I got to do what I got to do. Guess what that means? I got to grind some more. I got to go up and continue to go up this uphill battle. I got to continue to fight just to have a little sliver of joy. And I'm tired. And so many people have just disappointed me, have just, there are people I thought that I could, that I could count on. There are people that I thought were my friends. There are people that I thought had my back that I have found, or guess what? Just like everybody else was selfish and tense and just using me and my energy for their own personal gain. Whoopty fucking do, just another day in Danita's world. So now I gotta figure out now, after going to Toledo and going to Detroit, now I gotta plan a tri trip to DC by myself with whatever money that I have. Because it's just me. I can't count on anybody else. And I'm not expecting to count on anybody else, y'all. But guess what? This shit is hard as fuck. So people keep asking me. So, um, I'm back home today. And I just feel like I've just been just slapped with a ton of bricks waking up. I just literally, I just woke up like an hour ago because I've just been so paralyzed. I'm so sad because I feel so close and so far. And this is just so hard, man. I keep asking myself, am I doing the right thing? Should I just give up? And I'm sorry to be so raw right now. I just, I just need to feel heard for a second because I just feel like no one understands this feeling. And um, I just need y'all to pray for me, man, that I can make it through this. Because sometimes I don't know if I'm gonna make it, man. Hey, y'all. But when we have our mind made up, we don't see those delays as God trying to talk to us, trying to reveal messages to us. We see those delays as denials and we go to instant defense mode. And this is what the mode Miss Danita's in. She's in the fighting mode, she's in the defense mode, and she's determined that she's gonna win this relationship. But unfortunately, this relationship cost her her life. Now, Miss Danita is frustrated because she's had to go to three different states to get this visa. Now, just think about that. Three different states to get a visa. If that's not a sign, I don't know what it is. But again, we won't look at those as signs. We'll look at that as something or someone trying to frustrate us and deny us. And that's just how Miss Danita looked at the situation. Now, in this video clip, we're going to listen to Miss Danita tell us about how frustrating this whole situation is. And she just is really broken. And she says in this clip that maybe it is a sign. She didn't say it like that, but she said it like maybe the universe, maybe she knew. I think she knew that something was not right about this trip and something was not right about this move because she just doesn't sound like she's 100% peaceful about it. Miss Danita just sounds so broken in this video. I just really feel so bad for her. I just wish she could have seen that these stumbling blocks were all signs that she should not go on this trip she should not take this journey she should not relocate to nigeria but unfortunately she didn't look at it like that 
she looked at it like people were trying to first frustrate her situations were trying to frustrate her she never at one time looked at this that maybe this is a sign from the most high maybe this is a sign from the ancestors maybe just maybe this is a sign that i shouldn't go she never ever looked at it like that it's my mother birthday today Yay! <laughs> I'm kidding. Kind of not ready. But first of all, I just want to say thank you to everybody who has been showing me so much love and the encouragement and everything um, that you've been giving to me so freely. You know, this past month has been a whirlwind, and uh, I've been really pushing myself and really pushing towards the life and love of my dreams, and it's not been easy. Um, but my choice to document this has been so that I can show other people that you can go after the life of your dreams. You can go after the things and the desires of your heart. And it doesn't have to make sense to other people. It only has to make sense to you. To a lot of people, my journey doesn't make sense. To a lot of people, I sound crazy. Why the hell? As we see, it's now Miss Danita's birthday. She is ready to go to Nigeria. She's feeling confident. She's feeling reassured. She's feeling like this is the thing to do. And she could care less what anybody else got to say about it. What anybody else has to say about her journey means nothing to Miss Danita. All right, let's see what happens next. It's time we get serious about our health. So I just turned 37 a few days ago and I turned 37 and then my kids had their birthdays well um, a few days ago and you know I'm starting to get this feeling that I need to start taking my health seriously. You know I talk a lot about therapy and all these mental health things but also my physical health. You know I'm, I'm 37 and I'm a diabetic and I've been diabetic for uh, about 13 years now and for the majority of the 13 years it has not been controlled. And I've feeling the effects of diabetes. You know, my, I have neuropathy in my feet. Um, I have chronic hyperglycemia because I'm, you know, let's be honest, I'm, I have not been taking care of myself. I've just been eating. So today I made an appointment with my endocrinologist and that's my OBGYN that I'm going to get serious about my health this year. And I encourage you guys to do the same because life is not worth living if you can't live it. So make your appointments and get well. Okay, I really don't know where to begin with this video, so let's just talk about it. Alright, so in this video clip, what I found remarkable was Miss Danita had some serious, serious health issues that have to be considered when you are trying to relocate to some place like Nigeria or West Africa in general, mainly because the health systems are different than what we have in the United States. Access to medicine is different than what we have in the United States. Emergency medical care is drastically different than what we have in the States. So she said she was 37 years old, but I thought she said she was 38, but I could be wrong. Um, she said she was 37 years old. She's had diabetes, chronic diabetes for 13 years. All right, now diabetes is not a death sentence, people, okay? But diabetes is a medical condition that you have to take care of yourself, okay? You can't just decide, I'm going to Nigeria, so I'm going to get serious about my diabetes, and you haven't been serious about your diabetes for 13 years. That's a problem, people. That right there is a problem. And again, I'm not putting Miss Danita down. I'm just analyzing the situation. I'm analyzing the situation that she put herself in so that we all can learn from this situation. Ms. Danita then goes on to say that she has, I believe she called it uncontrolled hypoglycemia. And hypoglycemia, I think that's, when, that's the one where your blood sugar will just drop. You know, it just drops real low, you get real weak, you can pass out, 
you know, you start shaking. Like when you're real hungry, you know how when you get really, really hungry and you haven't had anything to eat, that's kind of like what it feels like, but worse. All right. So she says she has that and it's uncontrollable. Now, if anybody's ever been to Africa, okay, hypoglycemia is not something you want to have and go to West Africa because sometimes I'm telling you the food that you can eat, it's, it's difficult to find in West Africa. And if you're sensitive, you have a sensitive stomach, oh man, you're going to be extremely limited to the type of foods that you can eat because that's usually my situation. That's how I know. So you can easily, your blood sugar can easily drop and also tropical climates, okay? And tropical climates because you, you know, it's the extreme heat and humidity, it can cause your blood vessels, well, it causes your blood vessels to dilate rapidly and also that causes your blood sugar to drop. You know, that's why if you plan on relocating to West Africa and you have diabetes, you have to be extremely careful. You need to make a plan with your doctor. You need to work that plan and you need to be extremely careful, extremely careful. Now we're going to talk about, she says she had neuropathy, which was in her feet. Now neuropathy is a condition that sometimes that, you know, some people get who have diabetes. All right. And neuropathy is a condition that affects the nerves in the legs and the feet, okay? It's numbness and tingling, and that's why she was doing those dances because it affects your movement, all right? So she was, you gotta, you know, kind of keep moving when you have neuropathy, and that's why she was moving like that because that's what it affects, all right? So that was another thing that she was suffering with those are called the conditions i think they call them the conditions of um, diabetes these are like medical conditions that go along with diabetes so like i said you guys miss danita should have been taking care of herself long long before she got ready to go to nigeria this was a very dangerous situation in this video clip, Miss Danita is explaining how expectation leads to disappointment. She's explaining how disappointed she is in her friends and her family and her followers on the internet. She's disappointed in all of them because she expected them to donate to her journey. She expected them to give her more support financially. She expected them to give her more support morally than she has received. So in this clip, she is letting them know that everyone knew she did not come from a family who had money. Everyone knew that she did not have money and everyone knew that she needed their help to make this relocation. She's not saying, she's, she's explaining now that she's not telling them what to do with their money, but she feels like people could have donated, that people could have done more, that people could have shared more. She felt like I'm sharing my journey with you all. I'm giving you all an insight into my private life. And the least thing you guys could have done was donated to my journey donated to help her make this transition from the U.S. to Nigeria. So in this video clip, we find Miss Danita extremely disappointed. learned in this process of working to get my family to Nigeria um, is that expectation leads to support them. Um, so when I first started planning, for us to relocate to Nigeria versus waiting the 13 months to three years for him to get here um, was that it was gonna be an expensive process. I knew I couldn't do it by myself. Um, you know, I don't come from generational wealth. Um, I don't receive child support. So I knew that I would have to be creative in how I raise money. Uh, one of the things that I did 
thought to do was create a GoFundMe page. Even though I knew that GoFundMe took 3.25%, it just seemed to be the easiest medium to use to raise capital. Um, and so initially I thought that, uh, you know, in my transparency on the internet that um, I, I felt like um, I had enough support behind me that would be able to um, help me, if not all the way, but you know, at least help me to the point where I would be able to start to get things uh, rolling. And I did get help and I'm grateful, I was so grateful for that help, but unfortunately it wasn't enough to get us there, which again, I understand. Um, you know, everybody has, I, I know that everybody has the right to do what they want with the money that they work for. Um, and I, you know, again, I never intend to impose on that right that people have. So I said, you know, after, when that was not sufficient, I decided, you know what, I'll just wait until, um, I'm able to come up with, uh, the capital in whatever form that is, uh, I'll go ahead and start the process. And when that did, the opportunity did come, uh, as when I was able to really do all the things that I needed to do, like get airplane tickets, visas, vaccinations, things like that. Um, but again, me being a realist, I also understood still that um, I could only do so much. And in order for this to happen, I would have to rely on the charity of others. So um, what I then began to do, uh, in addition to the other side hustles that I've been doing, uh, was reach out to people directly. People that I thought knew my heart, people that I thought understood what my purpose was for going to Nigeria, understood the dynamics of my relationship, um, but also I felt like just knew me. Um, and I also reached out to uh, various organizations that I had worked with before um, to see if, uh, you know, if they would be willing to support me corporately. Um, and what I found in this process, and again, I was able to get some support, but uh, what I found is that, now I'm going to be honest with you, I'm coming to, right now, I'm very raw. Um, there is pain associated with this video, um, but actions speak louder than words that you can't expect things from people thinking that they are like you you know I can't expect me from other people um, but what has been the most heartbreaking part of all this is that there have been people again there are those people who have disappointed me but the ones who uh, have made me feel like I'm not trustworthy the ones that have made me feel like I don't ha that there's something wrong with my integrity uh, some of the questions that I've gotten in the process of asking have been very, um, in my opinion, demeaning. Um, and it's been hurtful. It's been very hurtful. The rejection um, that I felt from not getting the support, again, I, again, I understand that everybody has their jam. Um, and I never prepared to want to either, number one, make assumptions about people's financial situations, or number two, make assumptions about, you know, what people, where people's mindsets are at. But all I can speak from is my own human experience. Um, and what I will say is that through my, my personal human experience, um, I have felt like I was, I have been criminalized by some people in the way that they've asked me questions as if my intent has some type of, uh, uh, it's malignant in some capacity. So, um, you know, at this point, I've just decided, you know, I'm going to continue to just have my tribe around me, uh, the people who I know without a shadow of a doubt that they love me and they support me and they just want, they just love me for me. Um, they know my heart, they know my intentions um, and just focus on getting my family to Nigeria by any means necessary. Um, but I would be remiss if I did not continue this process without just being honest about my feelings, the hurt that I've experienced. Um, it's really been a, pain, a painful process, a lot of hard pills to swallow, um, just a disappointment from the people who I thought had my back. Um, so I'm definitely going to change the way I start to maneuver um, because at this point it's all about self-protection and self-preservation and I know that I've done all this work and I know that I'm a good person and I can't let anybody else uh, make me feel otherwise. I know my value. I know my worth. I know who God created me to be. Um, and I know what his plans are for me and his plans for me are to prosper me and not to harm me, that he has plans for hope and not a future. Um, anyone that I associate with who doesn't have those mindsets, can't, they, they just can't be my friend anymore. Um, so, uh, for those who have had my back, I said, you, you know who you are. I appreciate you and I love you and uh, we're going to do this together. We're going to get there together and I can't wait for us to celebrate together when it's finally done. And to everyone else, you know what, as much as I want to go off like old Nia would, I just say I wish you well. 
Um, I hope that you too get the desires of your heart. And um, I just want to say bless you because at the end of the day, anger is not going to get me anywhere. So I'm going to choose peace at the, other, at the end of the day um, and keep it moving because one monkey can't stop the circus. So happy Sunday and uh, see me again soon. Wow. In this video clip, Miss Danita is really, really angry. She's really upset. Because someone, I guess it's more stuff like it's more than one person, has been in her DMs. Uh, what do they call it? DM or DMs? Whatever. The, the, the box. The direct message box. They've been in her direct message box, leaving messages asking her, what does her husband do? And what is he doing to help raise this money since she's been on social media faithfully pretty much begging for money and scolding people i wouldn't even say she's begging i would say she's more like demanding this money no she right she's not begging she's demanding this money and she's upset with humanity which is her friends family and followers on social media because they're not giving her the money so this video was made a day after the one the previous video and again she's upset in this video because some well more than one person was asking her how was her husband supporting them and how um what is he doing you know to raise this money but unfortunately miss danita does not answer she says he was an engineer she says he's suffering because he lost his job because of covid you know everyone is suffering and you know she feels like she's a blessing to be able to help and she's threatening to block anyone anyone who asks her any questions about her husband she doesn't mind having to raise some money she feels like you know that's what she's here to do right now and that's what she's going to do and how dare you ask her questions about the money she wants you to donate to her so let's listen to this video so i really want to address an elephant in the room um and i'm doing this i number one i don't owe anybody any explanations and i'm fully aware of that um i don't have to do this but i'm doing this number one because i always have said that i will be transparent um, in anything that i do so people understand that my intentions are pure number two because some of y'all need to understand that y'all just can be popping up in people's inboxes talking shit to people, thinking that you're gonna say whatever you want, okay? So I'm obviously I'm very upset right now and I'm really questioning if I'm gonna stay on social media. What I wanna address is I'm gonna address this clearly. This is gonna be the last time I address it. And I don't, if you have a problem with this situation, you have every right to unfollow me and unfriend me. We don't need to be friends, okay? But anyways. This is the elephant in the room. So, people, so I've gotten some, a few messages that are trying to tactfully ask me, which I don't feel like you have the right to ask me at all, but are trying to tactfully ask me, what is, what is your husband doing to help you there? Okay. So first I want to say this. Number one, it's none of your damn business what my husband is doing. Okay. Number one. Okay. That's number one. Number two is that um, my marriage is sacred with my husband. We have God first in our marriage. And so what happens between the two of us? We both have an understanding of how it works, but what I'm going to do today is I'm going to put some fires out for some of y'all who have an issue watching me out here hustling for my family and doing what I have to do to make sure my family's together. So I want to give you guys a few answers on a few things, okay? I'm going to answer this to the best of my ability. Please forgive me in advance if I seem a little um, excited because I am, because I'm really offended. Um, I'm a good person. I'm, I know I'm a good person and I have learned my value and who I am and the audacity that some people have uh, to approach me and say the things that they say, I don't understand, I did not understand that this is the kind of stuff that was in the underbelly of humanity and it makes me not want to participate in it. Okay, but anyways, I digress. I'm gonna come back to Earth, okay? So let me tell you a few things, okay? Number one, my husband is an engineer. My husband is incredibly ed educated. Um, my husband lives in Nigeria. Nigeria, uh, when the pandemic happened, they didn't get stimulus checks. They didn't get unemployment. When they got, when the pandemic hit, most people there lost their jobs. Not only did they lose their jobs, they no longer had any sources of income anyways. 
So a, pe a, a people who is already suffering now has to figure out how are they going to, to sustain themselves. And when Nigerians get paid over there, more, a majority of people, are, they don't, there are not jobs there. Very few people have traditional jobs. So most people have to rely on having some level of capital to create their own business, to create their own, own source of income to make for themselves. So they go by a daily living. So pretty much what they make is based off of their daily wages, based off of how hard they work. So some days are better than others. But again, Wow, 10 days after Miss Danita makes her video, letting everybody know that her family will be together in no Nigeria no matter what guess what y'all she's on her way to nigeria it is may 5th and miss danita and crew are on their way to nigeria it's so unfortunate that a month later miss danita will be dead let's continue our story and see what happens when miss danita arrives in Nigeria. But before arriving in Nigeria, Miss Danita gives her fans and family and followers another verbal lashing for not supporting her and her family on their journey to Nigeria. Um, as some of you may or may not know, I am actually preparing to go uh, with my children to be with my husband in Nigeria. And uh, part of that process has been that um, part of my humility says that uh, I can't do it on my own. I couldn't do it on my own. So um, I reached out to people who I thought were uh, my friends, people that I have supported in the past, people that I thought we had a reciprocal relationship. And again, I'm not, we can, let's just say we're not talking about money at all. Money, not at all. So when I say people who have been there, I've been there for, meaning I, they um, say if they had an event, needed somebody, if they wanted support, they asked me, I showed up. If they were going through something and they needed somebody to talk to, I showed up. Um, even just being able to utilize my experience just for somebody else's behalf, I showed up. And here I became into this situation that people know I've been, my, my husband is overseas. Um, I have not seen him in uh, almost a year and a half, and I've been primarily doing this on my own. So I really haven't been asking, you know, I don't, if anything, I'm just kind of staying with the flow, just trying to make, make, you know, make the best out of a, a really crappy situation. And so finally, um, like when I took it upon myself to make sure that I was able to find a way over there, and I reached out for support. The support that I was seeking, that meant the most to me, honestly, was just someone to say, hey, you know, I know that this, is da this is daunting. Um, and they would be able to say that because they've been able to witness my journey. Um, I know this has been daunting. Let me know how I can help, right? So there's been two categories of people, right? The people that I've been there for who have not reached out to me to see if I, there's anything they can do to be present. And there's other group of people who have said, hey, whatever I can do for you, let me know and I'll help, right? Uh, and the common consensus about both of these groups, right, is that people are only willing to be there for you if they have something to gain from. People have made promises to me. They have given to me their word about things. And again, I'm not even talking about money, hey, material stuff, things you can sell. I'm talking just genuine being there. And they haven't shown up for me. Uh, and so I'm in a space now where I'm being honest, I'm, really, I'm angry right now. I'm hurt. Uh, so that when I do finally get overseas, that I am ready and prepared to cut off maybe 95% of the people that I associated with before. Um, a lot of these relationships will, will not be going with me into the new season. Uh, I say good riddance and God bless because I am no longer giving myself to people, places, or things that look at me as a commodity or a transaction and not a reciprocal relationship. So um, I'm going to keep stay, just stay to myself until I go there. And when I get there, a lot of y'all won't see me again. So uh, I appreciate those who have been and the rest who haven't. For hey guys, so. Look at the look on her face. I guess y'all know where Miss Danita is. Yep. She has made it back to Lagos, Nigeria. <laughs> okay, y'all, yeah, I'm going to stop saying. Yep. She's in Nigeria with her husband. And she is happy as can be. Look at the look on her face, y'all. Look at that. 
nothing but pure bliss. Here's a picture of Miss Danita in Lagos, Nigeria with one of her Niger Wise friends. That's what they call themselves, y'all. It's a Facebook group. And these are women who are married to Nigerian men and they go by the name of Niger Wives. So this is one of her Niger Wise friends and she's visiting her in Lagos. Miss Danita looks really, really happy. It's unfortunate that Miss Danita is about to meet her unfortunate demise. In this video clip, we're going to take a walk with Miss Danita in her neighborhood. And we're going to see her community that she's living in. And one thing that I did notice about this community is that it seems rural. It seems like it's out in the country. Okay, it doesn't seem like it's an urban area. And Miss Danita also mentioned something that we didn't know before, that she had gotten neuropathy, the neuropathy in her feet started the last time when she was in Nigeria. Now remember what I told you about tropical climates and diabetes and how it aggravates those conditions, those medical conditions, well, this was another sign that Ms. Danita was putting herself in grave danger because this medical condition she had was nothing to play with. So let's take a walk with Ms. Danita in her community. And we're going to also listen to us, her tell us about this neuropathy that she developed the last time she was in Nigeria. Because the last time I was here, I developed neuropathy and I couldn't walk. So now it's fun to be able to actually walk and see where I live and see all the cool people. And there's just so many cool things happening around here. So I'll show you. Okay, well, let me show you. Yeah, it's pretty cool out here, you know? People out here just hanging out. I stick out like a sore thumb out here. But it's cool. You can chicken, goats. It's a cool place to be. I don't want to fly. I stick out like an American sword. Like, I can tell everyone's looking at me like, she ain't from here. Which is fine. But it's fun. Another cool thing about Nigeria is all the infrastructure we have in America. Everything is drywall, but this stuff is made to last, man. I may not be the prettiest stuff in the world, but you know it's gonna last. I like this. How cool is that? I think it's a church. Short. Life is just simpler here. No, well, much slower. And really all you're worried about is just living. And uh, I kinda love it. So so hey, that's another fine day in Nigeria. You guys said you wanted to see more. First, I'm going to show you guys the hut. I have to warn you, it's not it's not for the faint of heart. It's hard out here to open in these mean streets of Nigeria, but I hope you can stomach it. So we're about to go in our compound. I hope you're ready. The outside. So our hut has crazy enough a gate. I think we need to call management to let them know that us peasants in Nigeria don't need gates because huts don't need gates. So this is the compound that we live in. As you see, nothing but straw huts around here. Pretty destitute, as you can imagine. It's a huge walking lot. That's our house right there. I'm sorry, hut right there. Uh, we don't have electricity in here, so we literally just run extension cords from here to America. If you can the man in the house didn't get kidnapped, didn't see any games, no scammers. So, so here's our kitchen right here. 
a refrigerator. This is our storage. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of crap in there. Mostly just dead birds. We have our dining area right here. What I love is that my husband decorated our thatched hut with so many beautiful paintings. I didn't even know that you could paint them up with mud, but my husband amazes me all the time. This is our living area. More of the wonderful art that he's done. Oh, wait a minute. Who turned the electricity on? We're gonna have a stern talking to this neighbor, the electric company, because we don't have our first world problems here. Anyways, into our legally lit house. This is our hallway, our parlor area. You can see, this is where my husband and I are sleeping right now. As you can see, my husband and I value cleanliness because who wants to be clean in the hut? Not us. This is our bathroom. A little different than what we're used to, but it does the job. And lastly, the main bedroom. I mean, I'm sorry. So, so all star cats on the side. Like, we live in a whole fucking house, right? Like, a wonderful house that only costs us about $800 a year. Meanwhile, at the ranch, that house would cost $800 a month, maybe. And it's peaceful, and it's clean, and I love it. And my sarcasm is just to dispel these myths that we just live in the jungle. Yeah, that is amazing. This next video clip gives us some insight into what was going on and Miss Danita's relationship once she arrived in Nigeria. It seems like they've been having some type of arguments and when they get into these arguments, it seems as if they get really heated and that Miss Danita gets really stubborn and she won't admit she's wrong and she's wrong and the argument and the anger just continues and continues and continues. So, I just want to make a comment about that. Now, ladies, one thing you have to remember is that an African man is not the same as an African American man, okay? They don't really understand our culture and they don't really understand our language, okay? And I'm talking about Ebonics. Now, when we get upset, a lot of time we'll turn to Ebonics and Ebonics includes a lot of curse words, okay a lot of curse words are used as adjectives profanity is often used as adjectives when african americans get upset and want to express themselves africans don't understand that and they get extremely offended by that behavior and by that language i don't know 100 percent if this was going on inside Miss Danita's relationship, but I can tell from this video and from comments that she's made in other posts that there was some communication problems and some difficulties going on because she referred to herself as Shanquilla or Shaquilla in certain posts. And we know this is a person who has a really bad attitude. That's how she described this person. So, if you got a really bad attitude, ladies, you might want to adjust that before you go to Nigeria or even in anywhere in West Africa. Because a bad attitude that disrespects men or women in public, a disrespectful attitude, is going to cost you a lot of problems. I don't care if it's in public or private, but a bad disrespectful attitude when you get upset is going to cause you tremendous problems in West Africa. And Miss Danita is admitted that she has, she can have a bad, disrespectful attitude when she gets upset. So I think this caused some problems in her relationship. So this lovely uh, marriage that she's putting out there that's perfect, that is not true. They're having some serious difficulties in this marriage. Serious difficulties. So check out this video and tell me what you think. That is really bugging me right now. This morning I got a message 
and the message essentially said I need to stop posting on social media for the next few days because um, not number one, not everybody needs to know what I'm doing, uh, but number two, that some of my posts have been bizarre. Um, and I'll be honest, when I got the message, uh, especially considering the person it was from, it really just kind of amazed me and it kind of took me aback that I would even get this message in the first place. You know, when I first started posting videos about my life in Nigeria, which literally just started like three days ago, I saw it as an opportunity to show people something that they've never seen, uh, specifically to expose black people to uh, where we came from. You know, there's so much important history and culture here, and it's so important, especially as Americans, to understand that American life is not the only way of life, and that there are other ways of life, believe it or not, that could be better than American life. Um, and so in showing my experiences here, showing, you know, where I live and stuff like that, it's, it's literally all, you know, educational and to just be able to show people something that they've never seen. So the idea that you know, even when I'm on my TikTok, when I'm being silly or bizarre, I've always been bizarre. Like, that's nothing new. It's just Friday, you know. But people are going to see what I'm doing, and I'm going to show people where I'm at and what I'm doing and what life looks like here. Because how can we expect change if people don't know what they're changing for or what they're looking at? So, you know, I'm not sure. I, I really want to continue to share my journey on Facebook, but at the same time, I feel like if, if, my transparency and my authenticity and my desire to share my life is too much for people. Maybe I just need to keep it on TikTok, you know, with strangers. You know, you'd think that the people that know you and quote unquote love you would, would respect and appreciate uh, the sacrifice of saying, I'm willing to show you my life. But, you know, at the same time, I also have to continue to realize that not everybody is me. Not everybody has the same value system as me. And sometimes I have to do things in the name of self-protection. Uh, so, I don't know, man. I don't know if I'll keep posting on, on Facebook or places where people know me, you know, because I'm starting to really continue to feel like people just don't don't like me. They don't appreciate me. I don't know what their problem is, but guess what? It's not mine. It's a personal problem. I'm going to continue to live my best life. I'm going to continue to be happy with my person, with my soulmate. I'm going to continue to explore Nigeria. I'm going to enjoy my family, my kids who are thriving better than I could ever ex expect. And I'm going to keep living my life whether people like it or not. You just may have lost access to it. So anyways, um, thank you guys for letting me know. Not you, all you guys, but some of you for letting me know how you really feel. And, um, you know, again, I just got to move differently now. So have a great day. One thing I'm starting to notice about Miss Demita is whenever you give her your honest feedback, she looks at that as negative feedback and she becomes defensive. She goes straight to the defense. And these are with people she knows. This aren't, these are not people she doesn't know. You know, these aren't people like the people in the comment section on YouTube. You know, you don't really know those people. But these are Facebook family and friends that she knows that are telling her that your behavior is strange. Your behavior is odd. Your behavior is unusual. And what's her response? That she's going to cut them off. She's going to stop letting them have access to her life because they're criticizing her life and she doesn't like what they're saying about her life. Again, in my humble opinion, Miss Danita put herself in a very dangerous position. Whenever you find yourself defending your relationship like this, whenever you find yourself defending your position like this, you need to reconsider your position and your relationship. All right. And guess what? This video is May 27th, around 10 days before she passes away. On this video, clip we find Miss Danita at the barber shop with her family they're all getting haircuts let's check this out this is June the 3rd this is just a couple of days before Miss Danita passes away And then Miss Danita's page goes silent. 
it goes completely silent. From that last video I just showed you, you don't hear anything, you don't see anything until July 27th, and this is what you see. You see an exit poster telling us that Miss Danita passed away on June 5th, two days after that last video, and that her funeral is being prepared to be held on July 29th, 2022. There's no explanation offered. There's no details of what happened. There's nothing, people. All you go from is that video post of her and her family getting haircuts on June the 3rd to this post, this exit post that her husband, it had to be her husband posting it because she can't be posting it because she's passed away. So he has to be the one posting on her page now. So there was no post until he post this post on July 27th that her service, her funeral services are going to be held on July 29th. Now the next video clip I'm about to show you, I'm going to warn you, can be disturbing. When I first saw it, I was really disturbed because I went from seeing Miss Danita laughing, joking, talking, and scolding, giving people verbal lashings to laying in a coffin in Nigeria. And we don't even know why. We don't even know why, people. So I'm going to post this next video, but I'm warning you, it's disturbing, so you may not want to watch. My guardian wife, we never expected what happened to her. We wanted it to be a happy moment. We enjoyed ourselves forever. So now we are old. It's quite unfortunate that we are departing this way. It's quite unfortunate that the union was broken because of this. My love, you were never a stranger, you love this thing. You've come back home to where you belong. You've come back home to where you find peace and rest. It is a vow I made to you. And that vow shall be fulfilled today. My darling wife, rest in peace and find joy wherever you are. Did you really just say find peace wherever you are? <laughs> oh, God. All right, y'all. Yeah, so... That's the end. That's the end. So, I can't even look at this. It just bothers me so much. So look, we're going to talk about this live. We're going to talk about what we think happened to Miss Danita. All right? We're going to talk about, do we think this was a medical condition? Or do we think this was the result of a ritual killing? Because we know those go on in Nigeria. We saw her on June the third, she was fine. June the fifth, she was dead. And for some reason, you all, she was not buried until December. I think that's when the you um, the embassy stepped in. See, the embassy stepped in to call for an investigation. So there's more to this story, you guys. So we're gonna have to do a live to talk about what the UN investigation, the UN embassy, I'm sorry, not the UN, the US embassy's investigation revealed. We're gonna talk about what this autopsy revealed. And we're gonna just talk about what you guys think. We're gonna talk about what we think happened to Miss Danita. Well, that's Miss Danita's story. I wanna thank you for listening. I wanna thank Miss Danita for giving me the opportunity to tell her story. And like she said in one of her videos, her goal is that we all learn from her videos. So that's the goal and that's what we should do. 
So join me on the live where we discuss what really happened to Miss Danita when she relocated to Nigeria and her repat journey turned into an epic.